Hey, I'm Dan. I'm also Dan. Dan. Hello, and welcome back uh, to the second and final installment of Space Quest 3 with Danny Abaddon. Um, yeah, I got back to the place that we were, uh, well, that I died in. I fucking fell in the goddamn crater. That's fine. Uh, whatever. So I'm just going to save it real quick. Um, and don't fall in this time, dickweed. Okay, um, so now what I have to do is drop the detonator into... God, you know what, maybe if I say in generator, that will work. Generator, I can't type. Ugh, okay. Gotta get closer. Gotta get closer. Let's try that again. Yeah! Poo, baby! Oh, yeah. The explosion disables the force field generator. You may now travel safely to Pestilon. That's what daddy likes! Oh, daddy likes that. Okay, so climb down. Peace, babies. Just go a little faster there. Put a little spring in my step. Because I believe the generator... Uh, you know... One of the things I learned by playing this game was when you fucking uh, drop an enormous grenade down um, a giant force field uh, generator, bad things happen. Like this. Uh-oh, that detonator has apparently set off a chain reaction of earthquakes. You better get off this rock ASAP. Yeah. So this was like... There have been a lot of games that have done this. Um, actually, Aaron and I just finished Resident Evil, which has this kind of feeling like three minutes, two minutes. You know, Metroid did it like... You know, you accomplish a task, and then you better get the fuck off Dodge, because, uh, you know, shit's about to get super real. And um, so I remember playing this game and feeling, like, super stressed out at this point, because, yes, now I'm fucking hung up on the rocks, and, like, the whole world is earthquaking, and everybody's kung fu fighting. It's not good. It's a bad time. It's all bad. Um, whoop. Now I'm going really fast, and that's not a good idea because there's like lava pits everywhere. Um, and that farty sound is not, in fact, farts, but uh, the world exploding. So, oh, my my, things have certainly changed since you were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the simmering lava below. Okay, uh, look, chasm. The molten lava casts a mysterious glow on the sides of the deep fissures. Watch your step. Okay, I can't, I can't jump that, right? Oh, that's not a good idea. Um, save. Hmm. Uh, don't fall in this time either. Cock. Okay, um, all right, let's see. Maybe jump, jump, chasm. You br your brow furrows in grim determination as you pray prepare for a trim and sleep. Oh shit, I'm using the pole! Oh sweet! The Romanian judge gives you a 9.5! A truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season. You'd like to try that again, but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below. Well shit, that's awesome. I wasn't planning on using the pole, but that probably means I just would have fucking died. So, they gave me the benefit of the doubt. I'm alive. There's my ship. Let me get the fuck off Ortega. Oh god, it's about to explode. And now we go! Yeah! Safety! We made it to safety, everybody. So proud of us. Okay, safely on the ship. Um, sit. And look screen. Engines. Yes, take off, please. Okay, never mind. Engines need to go on. Thrust generation underway. Ah, oh, that's the generation I was born into. The thrust generation. Okay, so we're off Ortega. Very safe. Everything's good. Let's look at the screen again and see if we bring up our navigation system, if we can find uh, the moon. Um, okay, resume the scan. Okay, that's flea butt. There's monolith burger. And boom, pestilon. Okay, um, surface uncharted. It figures. <laughs> cool. Oh, it's Sector 69. 
That's what I'm into. Um, wouldn't have gotten that joke when I was a kid either. Set course. We're standby. We're calculating the course. Everything's gonna be great. The course is locked as shit. Let's make it happen. Light speed, baby. Okay, that didn't take long. Oh yeah, because the moon of the place we were already on. Um, orbiting Pestilon. Okay, let's land. All right, so this is the final place we need to go to for this game, um, which means it's not going to be easy. We have to break into the Scumsoft lair um, and save the two guys from Andromeda, the creators of this game, who are being held captive um, inside there. Uh, the two guys from Andromeda, by the way, are Mark and Scott, who actually created um, Space Quest. So it's kind of like a meta, meta joke thing. So now we stand. And we push that button. That button. Okay. And now we save again, because there's so many ways to die here. Um... Eight million ways to die. Choose one. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I guess it's just this way, huh? Yes! Big time. You make your way through the forest of strange trees to this clearing where you discover the entrance to some large underground complex. This must be Scumsoft. Suddenly, the door to the complex begins to open. Oh shit. Alright, they're after me. Several guards file out of the entrance and disperse into the woods. They must have been alerted to your presence when you landed. Two guards remain behind to watch the entrance. That's not good. Um, let's see. What have I got? My old inventory. Got... No, I've got the invisibility belt. Terminator's invisibility belt. Okay, uh, put on belt. Okay, you wear the belt. Look, belt. Oh, not lock belt. Don't lock the belt. Uh, okay. Look out, it's low on power. Um, uh, activate belt? Oh, uh, decision time. Do you wish to stay here, return to ship, enter Scumsock? Stay here. Gonna stay here for a second. Um, activate. Yeah. Activate belt. Yeah. Wow, this thing really works. You then quickly realize that you only have a few moments before the belt's power pack is depleted. Okay, time to go. Uh, go. Uh, enter. Scum soft. Okay, good. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. No one sees me. No one sees me. Whew. What's happening? Oh yeah. Wow, that really was fast. It looks like you've made it just in time as your invisibility belt is now completely out of power. Okay, uh, look. You're within the outer fortifications of the Scumsoft headquarters. You see an elevator door and a button on the wall. Well, why don't I go ahead and push that button? I love pushing buttons. All right. I'm in. Guys, we made it. We made it. And, okay, I've crashed face first into the wall. That's fine. This is an interesting directorial situation. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, dang. Okay. I think I gotta slow down the speed a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's go in here and see what's up. Whoa! Whoa, that's... Okay. That's not good. That's... That's uh, Discovery Central. I will be totally fucked. So, uh, let's try here. Okay. Look. <laughs> you find yourself in, guess, a janitor's closet. You certainly have a sixth sense about this kind of thing. Okay, so let's search the closet. That's me searching. That's the sound of me searching right now. Okay. Um... Rummaging about the cramped closet, you find a pair of old, grimy janitorial coveralls. Oh, sweet. Why don't I put on those sweet-ass coveralls? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, all right, uh, I fucked that one up. Okay, uh, 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 let's do coveralls. Let's 
get rid of sweet ass. And you know what? Let's get rid of boys. What a great idea, Roger. No one will be suspicious of a janitor walking around. You grab the coveralls and pull them on, seizing the opportune moment to dump out all the old items you've been pocketing along the way. What a great disguise. Wait, what's this? You reach down into the pocket of the grimy coveralls and find, well, what do you know? Mr. Garbage, a trash vaporizer. You've seen these babies in all the janitorial supply catalogs, but your superiors were always too cheap to outfit you with one. All right, sweet. So now I am a janitor again, always, as always, um, with my scum soft. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see what's here. Did I, where, where'd that door go? Where, where are you? Okay. Come on. Yeah. Uh, huh. Look door. The door has a keycard security system as well as a composite facial scanner. Oh, that's right. Okay, it will be pretty tricky gaining access. Okay, so can't go in there yet. Um, and what is this? This is... Oh, okay. So, this is not where I want to be. This is incredibly awkward. Let's push that button and get safely back inside. Um, okay, so now I can go back into that main room uh, where, all those, uh, where all those dudes were and probably won't be killed, armed with my trusty Mr. Garbage. Okay, so now if I remember this correctly, okay, let's first take, take a little peek. You are in the cost-efficient corporate accounting department of Scumsoft Incorporated. These hardworking accountants are trying to figure out where the company spends its money. Okay, um, so what I have to do is zap all these little trash baskets um this is this place is like a super depressing fucking um well let me put in zap garbage yeah okay so i have to go around um zapping all the garbage in this office because if i walk by one of these guys and don't zap the garbage they'll know um that i'm an intruder dressed as a security i mean a janitor and they'll call security on me, and then I'll fucking die. Because they shoot you in jello. They, they encase you in lime jello. Whoops, I missed. Let's try that again. Um, yeah, I, the jello thing, I never quite understood it, but it happens. Well, that didn't accomplish much. God, why do they fucking... Mm, this garbage is... Mm, please zap. Son of a bitch! This garbage is incredible at dodging. Okay. Yeah, so this place is designed as, like, one of those sad, depressing cubicle situations where it's, like, an endless maze of shit. Um, and it, like, loops forever. So, like, if I went out the edge of this left screen, I'd be back where I was uh, on the other screen. Um, very, uh, very accurate. Oh, and that, that picture down there? I don't know if I can see it from here. Um, I need that. Look picture. Nope. Okay. That's Elmo Pug, if I remember correctly. He's the douchebag owner of this whole company. Um, and that's a dead end. Great. Love it. There's a lot of dead ends around here. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked in a cubicle. I've done it several times in my life. It is a god-awful, soul-sucking experience. And uh, if you're dealing with it, I hope you break out of it soon. Or, I hope you love it. Maybe you love it. Um, but I didn't love it. I felt like I was slowly dying inside every day. Luckily, I only had to do it for three years. Okay, so here we go. All right, now, let me think. How did I do this? How do I do this? Oh, 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 okay. Um, so this is a picture. Um, let's see. Yep, Elmo Pug. Uh, this guy, I gotta take it, but they will know surreptitiously you snatched the picture of Elmo. They will know that it's gone. So what I gotta do is I gotta copy the picture. I won't tell you guys why just yet, but maybe if you're very clever, you've already figured it out. First, making sure that no one is watching, you slip Elmo's picture into the copier and press the start button. 
Out pops a beautifully reproduced copy, which you roll up and stash into your pocket. Don't forget the original. That OP original picture. Okay, so put back picture. Wisely, you replace the original picture of Elmo. I just can't do anything that will like seem out of ordinary for a janitor. Luckily, that copier was out of everybody's sight. Whoops, now I'm down here, which does nothing. I'm stuck. None of these filing cabinets open. I remember being frustrated by that as a kid. I was like, what? Let me see what's in there. Crap. Because I couldn't figure out what to do in here for the longest fucking time. Um, okay. Zap that garbage. Nope, I... Sorry, sorry. Okay. Zap that garbage. God fucking damn it. Okay. Boom. Is everyone else impressed out there? At my fucking solid garbage destroying skills. God, I hope you're impressed. If not, please feel free to leave a comment. In fact... Oh no, come on, man! Oh, that's such dickishry! I walked too far from the garbage, and now they're gonna fucking kill me. And encase me in the goddamn lime jello! And I didn't save it, so I have to do all that again! Ah! Oh, it's agonizing! Oh, fuck my life. Alright, well, back we go. Eight million ways to die. Choose one. Oh, ball sacks. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess I'll tell you a little story um, while we do this, while we get back to where we were. Okay. Actually, you know what? Fuck that shit! I'm gonna pause the episode and get back to where we were in the first place. Okay. See ya. Okay. I'm back. Um, sorry about that. Now, uh, you know what? Let's save and just save the progress. Um, zapped a lot of garbage. And it really is easy to die here. I forgot. It's kind of nerve wracking. So I'm going to title this kind of nerve wracking. How do you spell racking? Is it like this? Like that? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so now. Sorry I didn't tell you the story. You know what? I'll tell you a little story. I'll, I, I'll just say that um, as much as I, whoops, as much as I have a dream job now, um, I have said many times uh, to people who have asked me in person that um, it takes a long time. It takes a long time of like pursuing dreams to kind of like break them and make them come true, you know? And uh, they don't always come true. And that's the scary part. Um, so... Brian and I, it's interesting, are of, like, two different minds about this. Like, you know, you always hear, like, follow your dreams and do whatever your heart desires and things will work out. Um, but, and I, I am a believer in that because my life has kind of been an example of that. But Brian thinks that's actually irresponsible to say um, because... It's like, don't quit your day job. Like, you need your day job. And uh, and just by a numbers game, things don't always work out for people. Um, so his concern is that, like, he would be enabling someone to, like, destroy their life if he said, yeah, fuck everything, just go for it. Um, which makes total sense. Brian, Brian, I think it's fair to say, is a more um, uh, pragmatic guy than I am. Which is good, because he has a wife and kid, and... I'm kind of like, you know, single dude. But like, um, so I guess I will say that like, I don't, I don't believe in destiny and I don't believe in fate. Um, I just believe in pure will, you know? Um, like just, and like, if you really love doing something and you want to dedicate your life to it, uh, I say go for it, but like, you better be sure that you have the stomach for it um, because what it's going to require is several different points where, you, where you're like, uh, am I blowing my life, you know? Like, am I fucking this whole thing up? Um, that's just part of it. Uh, oh, I'm just trying to get this right. Okay. Um, and that's a, that's a tough thing, you know, because, like, as you try to, like especially if you're trying to pursue an artistic life, like there will probably be a point in time where, um, you know, you see, oh shit. Um, this is the boss. 
And slave drivers. I love it. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Look at Elmo. Uh, look, boss. Behind the desk sits a boy who looks to be about 14 years old. Do your job and get out, he blurbs. Ah, what a nice fellow. Okay. Um, look, slave drivers. Um, look. You're in the boss's cubicle area, and the boss is in. Be irreverent. Uh, look, whips. Ah, uh, fuck it. Um, oh, look, men. That'll work. Over the top of the partitions, you see two gentlemen cracking whips. You assume that it must be the programming department. Oh, nice. Very meta. I'm sure they were working on crazy deadlines to finish this game. Probably only had like five people working on it. Um, oh shit, there's my ship. You stand on the platform overlooking the scum soft vehicle bay. In the center of the hangar sits your ship surrounded by rows of short range skull fighters. Now how will you ever get out of here? Oh, that's not good. Um, Okay, so, oh shit, okay, almost gone now. Um, so let's see. Let's see. As always, when someone leaves their place of work, you should look around and see what you can steal. So, look desk. All of the desk drawers are locked. However, someone has carelessly left a key card on the desk. Well, shit. Take key card. Whoops. Take key you're not near one. God damn it. Okay. Got it. You take the key card. Okay. Um, so yeah, the only reason I got on that was because like I had to take a lot of jobs in places that looked like this um, in my early uh, struggling musician days in Philly. And then my continued struggling musician days in New York. And uh, so in order to be successful, you really have to like you just have to have the stomach to like be in that position where you'll see your friends like getting high profile jobs and like like quote unquote safer jobs I guess and uh, moving ahead of you in life and it's painful and you'll kind of feel like you're getting left behind. That's all part of it, you know, and um, it can be difficult to deal with, but like it, it is it is so worth it when it actually happens and. Um, I'm a believer that it that it will happen. Okay, so here's the key card. Uh, use key card. You hear several clicks. I'm in, you think to yourself. Then you hear a synthesized voice say, key card verified, stand by for composite facial scan. Do you know what I have to do? If you said, hold up the picture of Elmo, you're right. Yes. So smart. So smart. Okay. And here we go. Here are the two guys from Andromeda. There they are. We're saving them. You cautiously enter a darkened chamber. A seemingly bottomless shaft drops, onto the, drops off into a black abyss. On a platform in the center of the chamber, the two guys from Andromeda wiggle helplessly in lime jello. The platform can only be reached by the four retractable bridges at each entrance. Okay, so let me look at the platform. The only visible means of access to the detonation platform is by means of retractable bridges. Oh, uh, look, bridge. Dang it. Nope, 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 that's not what I wanted. Okay. Look, panel. An array of control buttons adjoins each door. Okay, oh, I see. Uh, look, buttons. Uh, push buttons. Oh, it's over there. Oops. Boom, baby. There we go. Um, okay, look, jello. This is not your ordinary store bought jello. Eat jello. Yuck, you hate lime jello. Oh, well, geez, I mean, fuck. All right, uh. Oh, well, I've only got. 
inventory. Key card, cup rolls, vapor balls, copy of almost picture. Yeah. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, the vaporizer is the only thing. So, zap jello. Yeah, baby. You successfully free the two guys from their slimy con confines, and they begin to speak. Thanks, dude. It's great to be out of that green stuff. Hey, what's your name? Roger Wilco, you admit. They discovered our distress message we coded into the Astro Chicken game and sent us here as punishment. Let's get out of here before we're discovered. Oh, well, shit. That's probably not good. Probably not. Uh, I don't really have a plan. Really... Oh, shit. So, what's your plan for getting us out of here, Wilco? Uh, well, oh, that's not good. That's not good. Definitely not good. Okay, we got huge problems. Oh, that Elmo's pissed. Elmo's pissed. He looks like a little woodchuck. Nobody's going any... Huh. Nobody's going anywhere. Huh. You must have thought you were pretty clever, Mr. Wilco, disguising yourself as a janitor. Unfortunately for you, my boys find your starry excuse for a ship in the woods. Escort these gentlemen to the arena! You boys haven't seen a good fight in quite a while. And do away with those two Andromedans. They have been more trouble than they're worth. Take them away! Oh, crap. Um, well, I should have saved right before this happened. Um, um, not my best move. Okay, you and the two guys are separated and escorted away. A door opens and you are led into the dark unknown. Oh, no shit. Yeah, oh fuck, I forgot all about this. It's a mech warrior battle. I gotta get all up in this bitch. And we're gonna punch each other, rock and robot style. Oh boy. Okay, Wilco, the name is the name of the game is Nukem Dukem Robots. The only rule is that there are no rules. Okay, use the arrow keys to control your robot. J key to punch, M key to block, any key to start. You have a limited power supply. A successful blow will absorb my robot's energy and vice versa. On the other hand, a wasted movement of any kind will rapidly deplete your robot's power. Sounds like fun, huh? Okay. Uh, shit. Um. Uh. Okay. K uh, kick his robotic buck, Wilco. Okay. Uh, oh, dicks. Oh. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I, I, oh, this is off to a bad start. Oh, fuck. Uh, I have to, like, fuck. I gotta be real. Oh, M blocks. M blocks, that's right. Oh, this is not going well. Okay. Good, good. Oh, man. So back and forth with this shit. Like, okay, I have to... Okay. Every time... Every time I punch him, I gain his energy, but he gains some energy back. It's like... It's really hard to keep track of shit. Uh, oh, I'm doing well, though. I'm doing well. Oh, I've got, I found it. I, I've got my move down. I've got my move. The punch and run. It's exactly the kind of thing I do in real fighting. Uh, fuck. Okay. Uh, uh, come on. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. Yeah! Gotcha! Woo! Oh, awesome. Let's get out of here. Goddamn right. Uh, that is not what the people in the arena wanted to see. Get them, you fools. Oh, yeah. Peace out, bitches. Okay, I definitely have to save here. Whew! For a game that, like, lets you kind of take your time and, like, explore the world and everything, Space Quest 3 gets very fucking, like, arcadey towards the end. Um, so this is the other part. Um, well, Roger, you done good. You managed to rescue the two guys and escape from Pestilon alive. Looks like this will be a milk run from here on out. That's never the case. Okay, um, save. Um, da -da 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 -da. punched a child. Great. I think I said push, pooched, whatever. Gosh, Raj, we really appreciate you saving us and all. Uh, th yeah, no problem. You got it, Mark. Um, all right, let's look at the screen. Um, uh, attack speed. I guess I got to do attack speed, right? Fuck. Those jokers back on Pestilon must have tampered with the light speed thingamajig. I know, fuck. Um, all right, attack speed. Uh, and weapon systems. Shit. All right, yeah, fuck. Uh, dicks. I forgot about this. Okay. Um, I got my shields up front. 
And shields, okay, shields are now in the back. And I just like, gotta, okay, that's my fire button. All right. I just gotta fucking wait for these assholes to come after me. Um, okay, running. Short range fighters approaching from the rear. Weapons lock on detected. Okay, not good. Back. Okay. Um, and I just gotta wait for the fire, for the shooting. Come on, shoot at my ass. Do it. Do it. Yeah, target in rear. <laughs> Not the last time you hear that. Target in front. Uh, tracking. Uh, 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 uh. No. Uh. Ah, shit. Ah, dicks. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Um, target in front. Okay. Um, okay. Switch the shields to the front. Uh, target negative. Good, good, good. Um, uh, fuck. This is so nerve wracking. Um, target in rear. Okay. Back. Okay. Engage. Engage. Yes. Gotcha, bitch. Target in front. Okay. Shields up to the front. Damn, man. Nothing in this game prepares you for this shit. Uh, target negative. Gotta wait for further instructions. Uh, target in rear. Okay. Shields to the back. And gotta track you, bitch. Come on. Uh. Yeah. Yeah! Okay. Uh, target in front. Okay. Uh, shields to the front. I guess this is pretty much the same thing over and over, but jeez, it's a little nerve-wracking. Um, target, target, negative. Bring, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it to my rear! I fucking dare you. Uh, yeah, you walked right into my tracking beam, bitch. Wasted. Target in front! Okay. Jeez, man. How many times do I have to do this shit? Uh, okay. Target negative. Um, uh, target to rear. Okay, cover the back. If you, like, don't do this for any of them, I believe you're just fucking dead. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yes! The remaining enemy ships have given up and are heading back to the planet. It looks like you were just too much for them. You're goddamn right I was. Whew! That was fucking stressful. Uh, uh, exit. Oops. Uh, 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 controls off? Okay, um, uh, press F6 for cockpit view. Cool. Man, oh man, you really showed those bozos a thing or two. Now can we get something to eat? Yeah. You better believe it. What do I do? You inform the two guys that the light speed is no longer functional. They're not overly pleased by this piece of news. What? Now I'll never get any food. Some rescuer you are. Shit, man. Harsh. Harsh bud. I guess they do have mohawks, so they are tough. Hey, what's this thing on the wall? I can't... Oh, it says light speed access... Oh, uh, wait. Light speed maintenance access panel. Gee, maybe I can fix this... Fi oh, my God. Fix this bucket of plastic bolts. Yeah, this is it. This fan belt thing came off the round thing it was just on. Just a second. Oh, that sounds like some legit... Okay, she's all fixed. Let's go grab a burger. Nice. Oh, all right. Too late, you realize that you have no course laid in. The light engines kick in before you can override. You inform the two guys that light speed is now functional, but it's out of control. They're not overly pleased with this bit of news either. No, yeah, we're gonna die! <laughs> no, why'd I get up this morning? Mommy! Oh, God, okay. This, by the way, is something I would have loved to do. Like, well, I'll tell you in a second. Careening blindly through space, your ship speeds towards a sizable black hole. Once within the gravitation of the black hole, there's no escape. You plunge into destiny. Oh shit. Yeah, I would love, like, if I ever made a game like that, I'd love to program myself into the game and just be like a little minor character. Okay, how's it going? There's me and Aaron and Brian just chilling. We're sucked into the black hole. The overwhelming force of the black hole pulls your ship in. Helpless to do anything. You and your passengers strap in and hope for the best. You enter a blackness like no other you have ever experienced. All sense of time and speed are lost. It's very much like Dungeons and Dragons, those types of games, where it's just like, suddenly, a bright light becomes visible in the distance. It grows larger as your ship races towards it. Finally, you are hurled out of the blackness into a parallel universe. You know, just text, but like, you're, it's up to your imagination. But it's great. I love it. 
You cut the engines to sub-light speed as you near a seemingly habitable planet. Aw, it's Earth. It's the majesty of our planet Earth. What a nice little blue-green planet. We're lucky to live here. And there's Sierra Headquarters, located in California or Oregon. I can't remember. Oakhurst. What state is that in? It's not important. We're at Sierra Headquarters. So meta. And here's a friendly fellow. <laughs> Hi, I'm here too. Greetings, Earthling. We are two guys from Andromeda, universally famous software authors. And I am Roger Wilco, space-age swashbuckler and all-around nice guy. Aw, oh, I'd like to introduce myself that way. Hello, I'm Ken Williams, president and founder of Sierra Online. Remember I told you he was the president? Cool. So, you two guys are software authors, eh? What are your credits? Ever heard of Astro Chicken? No. Good. How about you two guys coming to work for me? Oh, this is nice. Sounds, Sounds great. great. How, How many, many buckazoids does it pay? Both of them say at the same time. I love it. Buckazoids? Say, uh, Mr. Williams, do you need a janitor? No. Oh. Oh. As our space saga comes to a close, Roger, feeling a little left out, struts off to his ship with the satisfaction of knowing his mission has been accomplished. Oh, cool. So I guess this explains... Yeah, the two guys from Andromeda go on to create the Space Quest series of adventure games, reaping fame and fortune. They grow fat on their success and soon become burnt out and begin a drunken tailspin into obscurity. Beautifully said. Oh, goodbye. Off I go. And so we bid our hero a fond farewell, as his ship once again bursts into light speed. Course unknown. The end. Yay! We completed Space Quest 3. Or I, I did it, with you! Thanks to the following for their cooperation in the making of this game. The Pestilon Department of Forestry. <laughs> um, the Monolith Synthetic Industries Incorporated. So actually, if you guys want, you can now go find the Steam Train... Fester's World of Wonders. You can go find the Steam Train episodes of Space Quest IV, and it'll pick up exactly where we just left off. And then you'll know a little bit more about it. Um, it's also funny because you can look back, that was one of the very first uh, episodes we did when Ross and I first joined the Game Grumps channel, and everyone hated us. No big deal. Water under the bridge. But, it, like, the dislike bars are all crazy, but... And I probably sound a lot younger, because uh, it was more than three years ago. Almost four, four years? No, shit. I don't know, but it was a long time ago. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a hoot. And then maybe someday we'll play Space Quest V, which I adore. Uh, and Space Quest VI, which is not as good, but I also adore it too, because I love them all. Um, yeah, man. This was awesome. Uh, all I want, the last thing I was going to say... Um, the little people nobody's in scum would also like to thank. Love it. Uh, aw, the two babes from Andromeda for putting us up with us these last 12 months. 12 months to make a game. Two guys alone. And you, for shelling out your hard-earned bucks to buy this game. Very cool. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to say, uh, about, uh, following your dreams and such is that there will be probably about five times, um, in the pursuit of said dream, where things will conspire against you and you feel like you should just give up and you're stupid and you're wasting your time and it sucks and everything's awful. Um, you just have to keep going in those moments if it's what you really want, if you feel like you have the stomach for it. Because um, the difference between people who do achieve said dreams and who kind of give up before they're achieved is just that, you know, that willingness to push through those moments. Um, and there will be many of them. Uh, so that's what I would say. Uh, go for it. Do what you love. I think you live once. So fucking live your life to the fullest. And don't be afraid. Because all of the best things in life come when you're out of your comfort zone. And everything worth doing is scary. Uh, at first. 
Um, but that's it. Uh, and, and look, like these two guys, Mark and Scott, they created something really special with the Space Quest games. And look at me, I'm fucking 37 years old and I haven't played this game in like 25 years and I remember it like the back of my hand because it just meant so much to me. So, um, and that's really what it's all about, like creating something that matters, you know? Uh, so thank you to Mark and Scott. Um, thank you to uh, you guys for uh, following uh, Game Grumps and Ninja Sex Party and uh, everything that I and my friends do. It means the world to us. And uh, and yeah, thank thank you to my mom. She's great. My dad. And I love him. And my sister. And my grandma. And I love you. Okay. Wow, this was really fun. This actually wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be way harder um, doing something on my own uh, because Aaron is such a good partner in doing this stuff and every time I feel like I'm out of things to say, he like chimes in um, like it's no problem, but maybe it's just that this game is so easy to chat about because I, I love it so much. Um, and now I'm rambling. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later and uh, goodbye and I love you. Okay. See ya! This is the after part when the screen's blue. Subscribe to us or watch more shit. Hooray, I don't know what to say. Oh, fuck, the music changed. Later.